free to come up to make the presentation of this proposal. Let me remind the author that you have 10 minutes to present your proposal. Over to you. No pensé por adelantado, pero tal vez me puedan alcanzar alguno de los aparatos para interpretación. Yo soy Robert Storrow y trabajo para el Instituto de Ciencia. So the rationale is that uh, critical infrastructure allocations for global critical infrastructure providers increases the diversity and the resilience of the internet. And so speaking a little bit more about that and, and what I mean by that, um, hopefully everybody's familiar with RPKI, been several presentations about it this week. Um, but RPKI route validation is based on signatures from the RIR that assign the resources. And so having diversity in the routing to the critical internet global infrastructure uh, increases the resilience of the, of the internet. Um, and there are many global critical uh, infrastructure providers that have been around since before the RIRs existed. Um, and they're using uh, resources from the IRIs where they, their organizations are. Um, but there are fewer critical infra infrastructure providers in the Blacknick region. So uh, allowing them in the, the used resources in the region increases the diversity and resilience of the internet routing system. Thank you. So the current text is in section 1.2, principles for proper administration and stewardship, where it says that numbering resources from LACNIC should be assigned to organizations that are legally part of the, the region. And so the proposed text is just to add a little note that exceptions could be granted to uh, global critical infrastructure providers that are outside the region. Um, and an example being uh, DNS root servers, and, and I'll talk more about that in a, in a second. Uh, actually, right now. So there are 13 DNS root server operators, and 10 out of those 13 use uh, addresses from a single IR, RIR. There, there aren't any that you have resources from LACNIC. So should there be issues with the RPKI infrastructure from that IRR, that would leave just three of the root server operators with RPKI valid routes to the DNS root servers to serve the whole internet. Uh, and problems at a second IRR would just leave, depending on which RIR had issues, only one or two of the root server operators with valid RPKI routes. That's, that's it, basically. Analysis. So we now start the discussion periods. We'd like to invite you to share your opinions, doubts, and to have your comments on this proposal that has been submitted. Let me remind you that there are two microphones in the room in the central aisle. And for those who are connected remotely, you have a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen if you're using Zoom or also you can raise your hand and ask for the microphone. Each question, you have two minutes for each question and two minutes for the answer by the author. Let me also remind you that we have simultaneous interpretation. So we'd like to ask you to speak slowly and in your native language and to let us know your name, your organization, and your position, whether you're in favor or against this proposal. If you are against, please let us know what reason this is. I'm Jordi Pellet. In principle, no matter if I'm in favor of this proposal. Yes, 
the uh, assigning uh, resources for critical infrastructure is a positive thing, and we should keep it uh, um, under LACNIC. I understand that any critical infrastructure operator that requests uh, resources for critical infrastructure will receive them. I understand of this proposal that this could be done by organizations from beyond the region, but there's a, something very important that we have to observe, and I see no problems in assigning these uh, resources if they operate critical infrastructure. However, there is a legal issue, and it is that they must be established in uh, the, the uh, LACNIC region, somewhere in the region, for them to have legal uh, accountability for the sources that they are requesting based on uh, this argument that they're going to use it for critical infrastructure. So if it's already they are already established in the region, they have a legal representative, and they have an infrastructure that will enable them to respond to legal issues, I see no problem why they should request them and that should receive them. Now, I understand that the proposal tries to assign organizations outside the region, that is, those that won't be able to respond from a legal perspective, if there's any problem. So I don't have a good answer for that question. That's exactly correct, but that's why we're asking for an exception. And hopefully, Carlos can clarify. Try to answer Fernando, right? Fernando, um, justamente ese es el objeto de la, de la política. Mike. Mike, mm -hmm. okay. Ese es el objeto de la política. Porque hay, los, en particular los operadores de root servers, eh, ninguno está establecido en la región y no van a abrir una oficina para, eh, para pedir direcciones. No, no tendría sentido. It is in the office and they won't come to the office. Most, in most cases, we are speaking of universities. Bueno, perdón. Soy... I'm, I'm a terrible singer, sorry. What I was saying is that precisely what you describe, that's what the policy is meant to solve. It's having exceptions for organizations that don't have work with critical infrastructure, but they are not as important. And it's not justified for them to open, uh, uh, to get settled in uh, the region. Yes, I understood. Thank you. Now, my doubt is how can we treat these resources that are under the responsibility of an organization that is not established in the region? It might be a minor legal risk, but still, it's not zero. How can we handle that? That is the doubt. The concept of assigning, assigning the um, IPs, it's fair. I understand the legal part, but I wanted to understand it from a legal standpoint, because if I'm not wrong, I think this is the first exception that we'll have, and how can we so, approach that? Uh, quickly, I, um, I understand that, and I think that essentially the external organization sí, not based in LACNIC, really has no legal basis to fight anything that LACNIC does. So if there's a problem, LACNIC obviously has a clear legal basis for revoking the resources. So in that sense, I think there's no risk to LACNIC at all. In my opinion, not being a lawyer. of LACNIC. Yes, indeed, Fernando. Regardless their location, it's equally difficult for us uh, to manage a, a legal issue in, the, in Argentina or in the United States. No different whatsoever in the fact that it's not in our region. It's not that as uh, we are in Uruguay, we can only have jurisdiction a legal jurisdiction in that territory. Anyway, as Robert says, it's, that's not what happens. We have jurisdiction on the IP addresses, and the worst thing that could happen is if we have to revoke them. We'll continue to have that capacity in any case. With this policy as it is, or with the amendment proposed uh, in this proposal. Now, if they had any situation uh, challenging that decision, they would have to come to the Uruguayan courts, regardless of whether they come from the United States, Belgium, or Uzbekistan, or Uruguay. Thank you. So, um, 
I so it's favorable if so we don't have an impact analysis but what the staff is saying seems to be very reasonable thank you hello I'm Douglas from Brazil and I wanted I'm in favor of this proposal with the spirit of the proposal I would say now um, I, I agree with the spirit of the proposal. Now I have a concern that's quite relevant. It has to do with the TLDs, DNS TLDs and the root server itself. But I'm sure that there are people that may be imagining how they could sort of uh, camouflage as a critical infrastructure to have access to that special treatment. I'm sure that there are people that are already thinking of that, and that's an exception scheme. So I consider that this uh, exception scheme that will be included in the policy should be more specific. For instance, there are people who want to open IXPs just to have IPs for their own infrastructure, and we know that. I'm sure that you know it too. So <clears throat> I have a suggestion. And the thing is that in this policy, we should make specific reference, speaking of critical infrastructure, of DNSs, of root servers, and maybe DNS of uh, top-level domains, TLDs, because otherwise, what prevents others from coming to LACNIC, not establishing in the region, and requesting IPs if they are not giving critical infrastructure? So I think it's worth including a description that is a bit more restrictive. Thank you. OK, that, that, that makes sense. Um, I think um, that there's already policy sentido, for it... critical infrastructure in the, in the policy. Um, and and I think that deciding you know what qualifies as critical infrastructure uh, is already a process that Glacknick has for for making decisions on that. Um, and I did specifically in the proposal say global infrastructure. And so an IP provider um, is going to be in general in a particular region. An IXP doesn't need to use any cast, for example, uh, for with their their addresses to to do their work. So, but I'm not opposed if, there, uh, if people think that there should be additional specifications. I didn't want to specifically say DNS root servers because I didn't want to exclude other potential global uh, critical infrastructure providers. With almost everything that Fisher mentioned. <laughs> I mean it, I mean it, this is being recorded. <laughs> well, let me restructure this. I don't really see that there is any inconvenience when assigning critical infrastructure to a internet exchange provider. And even if this is non-profit, this still is relevant, and that is critical infrastructure. So any traffic exchange point provider that wishes to have this would have no problem, provided these resources will be used in the strict sense for the purpose of the operation of a IXP provider. But as I'm also concerned about the fact of the number of TLDs that we have, particularly after 2023. There are a lot of these. So I'd like to know how this will work, because maybe it might be worthwhile to include some other type of restriction to make this more specific and not so general. And so there's a certain level of control and assigning the resources for those cases which it is uh, there is a true need, and this is clearly spelt out. Ultimately, this is a res resource reserved for posterity. Now, the main point I wish to make is precisely to support what Douglas Fisher has said. 
this should not be just something that is used and this is used mistakenly because it Lacknick will otherwise be unable to control whether that justification remains valid. Thank you. So I, I think there's um, bueno, some good discussion here. And I think we should, uh, people should follow up on the list if they would like to suggest modifications to the proposal. I'm, I'm open to that. Um, so. So now we will measure the temperature in the room to take this into account when we measure consensus. Let me remind you once again that even though the Zoom tool shows that you are going to vote, we do not vote here. We just tap the temperature here in the room. The result of this does not imply that this proposal is then passed on for consensus to consensus. I would like to ask you to please raise your hand if you are in favor of this proposal. And keep your hand raised, please. Thank you. Now, please raise your hand if you are against this proposal. Thank you. Now, raise your hand if you abstain. Thank you. So, Proposal LAC 2023, 6 version 1, special exception for global critical infrastructure providers, now finishes the eight-way weeks of initial discussion on November the 15th, 2023. So, as from that date and for two weeks, the chairs will communicate to the community whether this proposal reaches consensus. So we invite you to follow the discussion in the policy discussion list. So, so far, the policy proposals, a big round of applause for all the authors.